Welcome to the video lecture series for the job role of Micro Irrigation Technician. Unit 1, Session 3 that is on Design and Layout of Micro Irrigation System. In this session, we will try to understand the design and layout of drip irrigation system and sprinkler irrigation system. Now let's see what do we understand by design and layout. The design and layout of a micro irrigation includes the partitioning of the whole field into blocks of desired dimensions and preparing the layout for the network of control head, main, sub-main and lateral pipes and connecting them to the water source. The various sources of irrigation include tank, well, canals, lakes, rivers, ponds, reservoirs, streams, and ground water. The information about the water source include height above the ground level or the depth from the ground surface, details of the pump to be installed, and also the quality of water in terms of purities or impurities present in it. Preparing a layout requires collection of basic farm data. Farm data may include layout of the area, details of the water source, soil type, agronomic details such as plants to be grown, crop spacing, crop period, etc. and the climate data such as temperature, rainfall, evapotranspiration, etc. It also includes the topography, map of a farm, showing the area to be irrigated. The whole area is then divided into units depending on the number of sub-mains to be installed, keeping in view the pumping capacity of the pump. The main line is then planned for connecting to the sub-mains by considering the shortest possible route. The length of the main line is determined on the basis of the water flow rate so that the frictional head loss is within the specified limits and the total pressure head required for the system is within the pump capacity. So a major consideration in the design of surface drip irrigation system is drip tubing lateral spacing. Soil having more sand content requires closer spacing of drip tubing laterals, which increases the cost of the drip irrigation system. Wider spacing is possible with heavy soil, which contains more clay, for example, black soil, as the lateral movement of water is greater in such soil. Components of drip irrigation system. Now let us try to understand the various components of the drip irrigation system. The drip irrigation system consists of the following components. Now let's see, control head or head control unit, walls, pressure gauge, filtration unit, main line and sub main line, and emitters. So let's see each of these and how they function. Control head or head control unit is usually located close to the water supply. A typical control station includes the pump, backflow prevention system, that is walls, chemical injection system for fertilizers, chlorine or other chemicals, and a combination of different filters. A main line wall and flow meter are also included in the control head. It can be controlled manually or automatically. Automatic control system can be electromechanical, say for example, clock based or electronic based. For example, we can use computers. The head control unit turns the automatic walls on or off through the control signals. Now let's see what do these walls do. There are different types of walls used in the micro irrigation system. 
Let us learn about them. Now, the first one that we take is automatic control wall. These walls allow to turn different sections on and off automatically and that is why they are called as automatic control wall. Gate wall. Gate wall may be used in place of electric walls to turn different sections on or off. They are manually operated isolation walls. Flush wall. It is a self-opening wall that allows lines to be flushed when the pipe pressure is low. It shuts when the pressure builds up. Check wall. A check wall, also called non-return wall, is a mechanical device in a pipe that permits the flow of water in one direction only. It prevents the backward flow of water. A pressure reducing wall is commonly used when installing a drip irrigation system or where high pressures can pose a problem. Pressure gauges are placed at the inlet and at the outlet ends of the filter to measure the head loss across the filter. A filtration unit is required to remove the impurities present in the irrigation water. Hydrocyclone, media and screen filters are the different types of filters which are used in the micro irrigation system. The choice of filter depends on the quality of water. If the quality of water is poor, then a filter of higher mesh size is used. Main line and sub main line. Main lines or sub mains and laterals, they supply water from the control head into the fields. To minimize the overall cost of drip system, PVC pipes are used as main or sub main pipes and are buried at around 60 cm from the ground surface. Lateral lines. The lateral pipes are made of linear low density polyethylene, in short LLDPE. It is often placed above the ground but it can also be buried. For row crops in the line source type of micro irrigation system, a lateral line combines the function of the line and the emitter. These include laterals constructed from the porous pipe, twin bore pipe or pipe provided with evenly spaced built-in emitters. Now let us learn about the emitters. Emitters can vary from sophisticated constant flow rate at variable pressure types of devices to very small simple orifices. The main objective is to assure uniformity of water distribution. The emitter should not clog very easily. Emitters can be classified into five distinct categories. Long path emitters, short orifice emitters, vortex emitters, pressure compensating emitters, porous pipe or tube emitters. Now let us see what are the different components of sprinkler irrigation system. The first is pump unit, second tubings which include mains, sub mains and laterals, couplers, sprinkler head and other accessories such as walls, bends, plugs and risers. Now let us learn about each of these components. Pumping unit. It comprises of a pump and a power unit to supply electricity to the pump. The pump unit lifts water and produces the desired pressure for distributing water through the emitters. Electric motor driven pumps can be activated using a pump start relay that is activated by a computer. You can also use solar pumps to save electricity. Filters. Now, there are common types of filters which include screen and graded sand filters which remove fine materials suspended in water. Filters come in different volume capacities and mesh sizes. Now, let us see what do we understand by main lines, sub mains and laterals. Main lines, sub mains and laterals supply water from the control head into the fields. The sub main pipes for sprinkler system 
is generally made of high density polyethylene in short HDPE pipes risers now let us try to understand what do these risers do risers are the sprinkler connected to the sprinkler heads to the lateral pipes or tubes sprinkler heads distribute water uniformly over the field without runoff or excessive loss due to deep percolation the sprinkler heads are installed on riser pipes to avoid turbulence in riser pipes the minimum height of the riser is 150 mm for 15 to 20 mm diameter and 300 mm for 25 mm diameter in general 900 mm long gi pipe of 25 mm diameter is used now let us try to learn about another very important component of the sprinkler irrigation system that is sprinkler nozzle the selection of the sprinkler depends on its nozzle size and the pressure with which it discharges water let us now summarize what you have learned in this session you have learned about the various factors that influence the design and layout of a micro irrigation system you have also learned about the various components of drip and sprinkler irrigation system so that you can easily install them as per the design and the layout so if you think you are fit for the role of micro irrigation technician and want to help the nation conserving water so learn by doing and give your best that's all for this video and in next video We'll cover session one of unit two. Till then, enjoy learning.